Well, um, let's now continue on uh, problem number three. Um, here we have a hospital use two types of rubber gloves and uh, they have estimated an uh, annual internal interest rate of 22%. And the rubber gloves are ordered from different vendors. And we can see here that they have different annual demand and a different unit price and also a different ordering cost. So first question, find the optimal order size for each of the two types. Then find the corresponding cycle time, how many orders has to be sent each year. How many gloves of each type should be on stock when a new order is sent if both have a lead time of two weeks? And here we can recognize this is a deterministic or fixed rate uh, problem. So we should just estimate the reorder point based on the demand in the lead time. Uh, on C, the producer offers a discount type where the price is reduced to 240 for the number of gloves exceeding 300. And what is the optimal order size when you get this discount offer? On D, the management has decided that they should not have more than 30,000 uh, kroner on, uh, as the value of the rubber gloves. So how will this affect the ordering policy? And on problem E, uh, the way to solve this question is based on the condition that uh, the cost divided by the holding cost is equal for these two uh, items. And what does this condition mean in practice? And generally, uh, should the same method be used if the maximum limit is given in storage space instead of money? And give reasons for the answer for, for this. So that, that's a, a theoretical question at the end of, of this um, uh, problem number three. Uh, <coughs> okay, we uh, can start on number one and the optimal order size for each of the two types of rubber gloves. Well, this is a very typical E of Q situation. We have a fixed rate demand as shown here. So to find the optimal order size, we should use the E of Q formula for each of the two types. And here we can see the calculations. First, find the holding cost for number A, which is the interest rate. Interest rate was the same. And uh, the cost, so the holding cost means the cost of storing one unit of inventory for one full year, since this is the annual uh, interest rate. Uh, it will be 22 for uh, gloves of type A and 55 for gloves of type B. And using the EOQ formula here, we have different ordering cost for these two items. We have a different demand and we have a different holding cost, but the formula is the same. So use the EOQ formula and find that the optimal order size of glow of type A is 171 and 124 for type B. And then we are asked about the corresponding cycle time, how many orders has to be sent each year and how many gloves should be on stock when a new order is sent if both have a lead time of two weeks. So here we actually have three different questions. Um, as I have mentioned earlier, very important to answer all the questions. Read through the text thoroughly and uh, answer everything is what, what it uh, is asked about. So here, first cycle time and the cycle time given in year is the order size uh, divided by the demand, the annual demand, which means 171 and 124 divided by the demand, which gives the cycle time in a fraction of a year. Uh, this corresponds to 1.28 months and 1.07 months and corresponds to 9.3 per year and 11.2 per year. If you divide 12 months to this uh, number uh, shown here. Uh, and again, we are asked about the reorder point, how many should be on stock? Well, it will be 
the demand in a two month uh, two week period which is 252 of a year so we will multiply the annual demand by the fraction 2 divided by 52 and get the reorder point 62 and 54. So here we have a fixed demand. We will have an order like this. We will have a demand at the fixed rate. A new order will be received. And since we have a two weeks um, lead time in this case, we can easily calculate the reorder point by finding the demand in the two week period. Uh, so then we are asked about the producer which offers a discount type where the price is reduced to 240 for the number of gloves exceeding 300 in an order. And we remembered while well, this is uh, type B we have already found that uh, the optimal order size should be 124. But now we are given the option that we can have a discount if we are ordering more than 300, which is a quite large increase of the order from 124. But uh, then instead of, uh, uh, of the, the price of uh, 250, we will actually get a lower price of 240 for those exceeding 300. So we have to pay the same price for the gloves, the first 300 at this point, and uh, then we will get a lower price, price for those exceeding. This is a, an example of what we call the incremental quantity discount discount for those exceeding the breakpoint uh, and we remember also that we had uh, uh, we had seen at the, the all unit discount where you get a discount on all the units in the order but here we have only discount for those exceeding the breakpoint well let's now look at the cost function shown here well if you are not ordering more than 300 then you have to pay 250 per unit, uh, uh, 250 multiplied by Q. If we are ordering more than 300, we have to pay 250 for the first 300 and 240 for those exceeding 300, Q minus 300. So the cost function of an order will look like this, either 250 Q or 3000 plus 240Q, if we simplify this expression here. So these are now the two options, and uh, the first option should be quite easy, 250, an order, uh, and a, a unit cost of 250, but the other, then we have an expression, we have 3000 divided by Q plus 240. This is the price per unit, so if we, for example, are ordering 400, the unit price will be 3000 divided by 400 plus 240. And then of course, the larger Q, the lower the unit price will be. Uh, we have already found that the optimal order size without discount was 124, when you have 250 as the unit price. The cost function looks like this. We have the ordering cost, Annual demand divided by the order size determines how many orders in one full year. K is the cost per order, so this will be the order cost in a full year. The cyclic inventory cost is one half of the Q, which represents the, uh, the average size of the stock. The average size around here, since we have a fixed rate demand, we can find the average size of the stock by dividing the maximum uh, size, which is equal to the order size, uh, by two. And H, which represents the holding cost for one unit in one full year, which we have found by multiplying the cost per unit by the interest rate. And in addition, we have one third part of the cost function now, because in this case, we have a discount situation where the 
price actually depends on the order size. And then this is a part of the relevant cost, the purchase cost, which is the lambda, the annual demand, multiplied by the unit price. So in the first case, without discount, we can easily calculate the cost function like this. Order, uh, order cost here, cyclic inventory cost, and the purchase cost, a total of 356,797. But in the second alternative, when we have an, uh, when we have an, um, a discount situation, we need to use the expression of the unit cost in the cost function, looking like this. Ordering cost will be uh, as usual. The holding cost will be one half of Q, still the average size of the stock. The interest rate, but now instead of the value of C, which was 250, we need to use the expression shown here. Because the unit cost will now depend on the order size. And similar in the purchase cost, we have still the same annual demand, but we need to multiply it by the expression, which represent the unit cost. And now we can simplify this expression, and we will get the formula shown here. 400, no, 4,620,000 divided by Q. This and this. Uh, plus 26.4 multiplied by Q. Well, multiplied by Q, we get here. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, around here. And uh, in addition, 300, the constant of 336,330. So this is now the same formula as this one when you have simplified and put the similar uh, factors uh, together. And as we remember, we have found the earlier the EOQ formula by deriving the cost function. So now we need to derive this cost function to identify the optimal value of the order size Q. And deriving this function, we get minus 4,620,000 divided by the square of Q the derived of this factor, plus 26.4, and deriving a constant result in zero. So now, when we put the derived function equal to zero, we know that we will find the optimal point of Q. For any uh, function, uh, we know that the derived function will represent the gradient uh, of the tangent. So at this point, the gradient which touch this line at the, at the optimal value will be zero. And of course at this point it will be a positive value, at this point it will be a negative uh, value. But here at the optimal value, either a maximization function or in this case we are minimizing the cost, then we will have a curve looking like this, but in the, uh, both situation, the, when the derived function is equal to zero is where we have the optimal, either the maximum or the minimum point. So here, the derived function is shown here. Solving it with respect to Q, we will find that the optimal order size will be the square root of this number divided by 26.4 which is 418. And 418 is more than 300, which was the break point. So this is a possible optimal strategy. Order 418 items, and then you will get a discount, a lower price for 118 of them. You have to pay the same for the first 300, but you will have a lower price for 118. And we have already simplified the cost function, so we can now use this function instead of the, the previous one, because this is much simpler, and we can put the Q value of 418 
into this function and get a total cost of 358,418. But comparing now to the value found here, we actually see that the optimal uh, policy with a discount will give a higher cost than the optimal policy when you're ordering 124. Because the hauling cost would be so much higher that even if you will get a lower unit price, it will not be, uh, be uh, economical to accept this offer because you have to order so many more items. You have to store 418 items uh, uh, instead of, uh, uh, of ordering 124. So in this case, we actually found that we shouldn't accept this offer about a discount because it will be more expensive than using the strategy formed by the EOQ formula, the, the EOQ <coughs> value. Uh, and then last, no, not last, but the question about uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, maximum value of the stock, which never should exceed 30,000. And the maximum value of the stock will then now depend on the two items, the two types of gloves. Uh, and of course, the maximum value will be at the point where you have the maximum size of the stock on each of the two items. When you have the Q, the EOQ value of A at, multiplied by the cost or the price for glow of type A, which will give us a total of 17,100. And for glows of the type B, we have 124, the optimal order size, multiplied by the price, a total of 31,000. This will be a sum of 48,100, but we have this limit of 30,000, which means that the ratio here will be 30,000 divided by 48,100. And this means instead of using the EOQ values, we have to use this ratio and reduce by this ratio here. So multiply the EOQ values by the ratio of 62.37% uh, and you will get the order size for each of the two types here. And then we can look at the money invested, the maximum amount invested by this strategy. Uh, it will now be 107 multiplied by the price of type A and 77 multiplied by the price of type B, which is a total of 29,950. So close to 30,000 as you can call. So this is now when you have a constraint on money, we should reduce by the same ratio on both or all the items which is included. But then we have the last question here in problem three. The way to solve question D is based on the condition that CA divided by HA is equal to CB divided by HB. And you have to answer first, what, sh what does this mean in practice? Well, of course, it means that they have the same interest rate. Because this formula is valid for both of them. And since C divided by H is equal, it means that the interest rate will be the same. And this is as we have been given in the uh, prerequisite here, that, that they have the same interest rate of 22%. Uh, also quite logical that they have the same interest rate on the same type of, of products. Uh, then answer about the, the last question here. Generally, should the same method be used if the maximum limit is given in storage space instead of money. And give reason for this answer. Well, when you have storage space, it might be different. Well, here we are talking about glows, which probably will take more or less the same, uh, same um, storage space. But in different types of products, which has a different volume, then uh, 
it's not necessarily the best, the, the ratio phone in the, uh, in the way we, we did in problem D will be the best strategy because we could rather have uh, items with a high value on cost divided by volume should be stored in a higher amount than those with a smaller value. And we have seen, uh, I haven't, well, probably haven't gone too much into details on, on this problem, but we need to find uh, the optimal combination by more advanced method. Uh, and one example shown here is the Lagrange optimization. This is not necessary to know in detail how to solve such problem with Lagrange optimization, but you should know about it, that the uh, constraints on money is quite easy because then you can just find the average on uh, or the, the ratio by the con given by the constraint and the current uh, policy. But when you have different volume and different cost, there might be another strategy which is better. And items with a high value on the cost divided by volume should be stored in a higher amount than those with a smaller value. Okay, then let's go on to problem number four, shown here. Then we have a lot sizing problem. <coughs> so, we have a factory has made a production plan and estimated the need of given components for six weeks in advance. And here we assume that we are given, this is orders, known orders, or at least it should be a very good uh, approxim approximation given by, by forecast. Uh, you don't have a fixed demand rate as this, but you have a fixed demand per period, which is varying from one period to the next period. And here we have ordering cost given as 200, and we have given an internal interest rate per period, which is 0.5%. So to store one item of inventory from period one to period two, it will cost you 0.5% percent of the value of, uh, of that item. Uh, then, first answer this question, what will the combined ordering and holding cost be if the factory uses the lot for lot principle? We remember lot for lot means ordering or eventually producing exactly what you need every week. Exactly 25 in week one, exactly 40 in week two, exactly 15 in week three, and so on. This means you don't have to store anything to the next week, but you will have setup cost or ordering cost in every week. Uh, this is well, one example of what we call an extreme strategy. And the other extreme strategy is to order or produce everything you want in period number one, then you will have only one a period with a setup cost, but you will have storage cost for all to all the next the coming periods. Uh, then problem B, use the silver meal heuristic and find an alternative ordering strategy. What is the savings by using this strategy? Okay, use silver meal. This is an heuristic which will give you an uh, usually a better answer than the lot for lot and see how much you will save by using this strategy. And problem C, suppose that the maximum production per week is 60 units, then formulate the described lot size problem as an LP problem, which can be solved by an optimization software like Lingo. So here we hopefully remember that these types of problem, the lot sizing problem, can be solved to optimality by using an optimizer, and we have used the optimizer Lingo as the, uh, the software in, in, in this course. But there are other uh, optimizers. And, and here, formulate it as a linear programming problem. You can write directly the Lingo code, or you can write it in mathematical terms. Uh, it, uh, it will be, be correct both ways, uh, such uh, the formulation of the, the problem here. 
Uh, okay, let's now first try to answer these questions. And uh, first should be pretty easy. First find the different uh, parameter values here. We have a cost of 600. We have an internal interest, uh, the interest rate here per period, which is 0 0.5%, 0 0.005. We have the holding cost per period or per week, which now will be this value multiplied by 603. So storing one unit of inventory in one week will cost you three kroner. And you have the setup cost or ordering cost given as 200. And of course, using the lot for lot strategy, place one order every week and not storing any inventory, it will be 200 multiplied by the number of weeks, a total of 1,200. So, question B, use the silver meal heuristic, find an alternative ordering strategy. And what is the savings by this strategy? We remember silver meal, this is the general formula for the silver meal, it will try to find the average per period cost. Compare, it, it is a myopic uh, uh, heuristic, starts at the one point and look one period at a time ahead. So first, we will look at period number one and go uh, and find the average. Uh, and of course, only producing for one period ahead means that we are producing 25 and not storing anything. That means the average cost will be the K value of uh, 200 and no storage divided by J, which is one if you are only looking one period ahead. Next option, look two periods ahead, means that you should produce uh, 65 in period number one and store 40 of them to the next period. Then the silver meal strategy or the silver meal uh, calculations will look like this. 200, still we have to have setup cost, plus the holding cost of three multiplied by 40 items divided by the number of periods, which is two. This gives a cost of 160. This number is smaller than this number, then we should continue. So the next option means that we should look three periods ahead. 25 plus 40 plus 15 will be a total of 80. We should produce 80 items in period number one. 40 of them should be stored in one period and 15 of them should be stored in two periods. The silver meal calculations will look like this. 200, setup cost. 40 multiplied by three, store 40 items in one period to a cost of three. And 15 should be stored in two periods to a cost of three. And the average will be the number of periods, which is three. This cost, 137, is smaller than the previous, which means that we should continue. And then look four periods ahead, means that we should produce 100, store 40 in one period, 15 in two periods, and 20 in three periods. Well, then you will have the cost function looking like this. 20 stored in three periods to a cost of three, in addition to the previous costs here divided by the by four to get the average. And now we will get 147.5, which is a higher value than the previous. This means we should stop here and produce for three periods in period number one. And then start all over again for period number four. Well, period number four, uh, only one period means only setup cost. Period number four and five means that we should store 25 units in one period to a cost of three. And periods four, five, and six 
we can see that the cost will decrease. So the conclusion here is that the silver mill strategy will give us a production plan looking like this. Uh, the demand is shown here. The production should be 80 in period one. And then you have to store. This is the stock level after each period. And then again, in period number four, we need to start a new production run and store until period number five and six. This plan will give us a cost of two times the setup cost of 200 and the holding cost of three multiplied by the sum of the inventory levels, which will give us a total of 775. And we remember from problem A that the uh, that the lot for lot strategy had a total cost of 1200 so instead of producing every week we should only produce in week number one and four and we will save 425 because the cost of storing inventory is so much smaller than the cost of setting up uh, production or ordering in every week so then we have to answer problem C. Uh, suppose now that the maximum production per week is 60 units. This means that we cannot actually use the strategy phone in the silver mill because we had more production per week than 60. We should now use this constraint and formulate a lot size problem as a LP, linear programming problem which can be solved by an optimization software like Lingo. And here I have uh, written in the solution file here, I've written the, the simple Lingo formulation. It is also possible to well, write by mathematical symbols or eventually write by Lingo code, which you also have been presented in, in this code, in, in this course. But here, look at the Lingo formulation here. The deltas will now represent the six weeks, and the deltas will have a value of one if you have a setup cost in a week, if you have production in one week, and it will be zero if you don't have production. 200 is the, uh, the production or the, the setup or the ordering cost multiplied by the sum of the delta, which is the total number of weeks where you should have uh, ordering cost. And three is the holding cost multiplied by the inventory level for all, should be an I6 here too, but even if this of, of course will be, be zero because you should not uh, produce more than necessary. Uh, but still it should be, should be included here. Uh, so this is the objective function, 200 multiplied by the number of setups in the full time horizon, and three multiplied by the sum of the inventory level in the full time horizon. The first group of balancing constraint is shown here, that the production, the X in period number one, should be equal to the demand and if it's higher than the remaining part should be stored as inventory. In pre period two, you should produce what is necessary to meet the, de the demand of 40 and what is different should be the difference of the inventory level. And of course, if you don't have production in period number two, you have to have enough inventory in period number one to meet the demand in period, uh, in period number two. And if you have more, the remaining will be st stored as inventory in period number two. And similar, in the production in every period should meet the demand in that period and eventually be adjusted by the inventory level. The next group of uh, balancing co or constraint is uh, the constraints here, which tells about the maximum production. So this is now the new constraint, which is included in problem C, which was not included in when we looked at the silver mill strategy. 
the maximum production should be 60. So here we see that the x1, the x2, and so on, all the x's, should be smaller than or equal to 60 multiplied by delta. If delta is zero, there will be no production. The delta are one in the periods you have set up, and it is zero in the period when you don't have set up. So the production should always be smaller than or equal to 60 multiplied by delta. It means it should be smaller than or equal to 60 when you are producing, or it should be equal to zero when you're not producing. And the last group shown here, the deltas should be binary variables, which means they should have the value zero or one. So this is a simple lot sizing problem with a constraint of production of 60, um, written as an LP problem in, in lingo with the simple uh, lingo code. Okay, we have one more problem left in this exam, which is problem number five. And well, you can also see that it is included uh, a few pages of the table of the normal distribution, but of course you, you are allowed to take your textbook, so you can find the full table in, in your, your textbook. Uh, well, let's now at least go through the question of problem five before we take the break. Here, this problem is about stochastic or uncertain uh, 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 demand. So you don't have this fixed demand situation, but instead you have, well, you have two different problems here. The first one is a one periodic, a newsboy problem. And the second one is a QR, uh, a stochastic inventory problem where you can store inventory. Uh, but first, this company, among other products, they are selling a set of garden furniture consisting of a bench, a table, and two chairs. This is imported from Asia before each summer season. So here, at least at, at the start, uh, you are treating this as a single period, a typical newsboy problem. You are not allowed to store inventory from one summer season, season until the next season. You have a price of 600, you have a sales price of 2000, and after the summer season, you have a uh, salvage value of 400. So you are able to sell what you have left on stock to a lower price, and you will actually lose some money because 600 uh, compared to 400, you will lose money, but you will at least get something left, and you don't have to store all this inventory to the next season. Here you are given a demand assumed to be normal distributed with an expected value of 90 and a standard deviation of 15. First, solve this as a one periodic problem. Find the optimal order size for the furniture set if the objective is to maximize the profit. And then, instead of treating this as a single periodic or a newsboy problem, it wants to find a solution which includes storage cost and several orders each season. So now we rather treat this as a problem with a stochastic demand, looking like this. Then you have to consider both a safety stock and also the probability of getting a stock out. The cycles will be different. Sometimes you might have a very high demand and you experience a stock out, and sometimes a very low demand and have lots of items left on stock when you receive the next order. But here, uh, we assume a lead time of one month, a monthly demand of 18, standard deviation of seven, and a monthly internal interest rate of two. Here, what is important, use the same time unit, but here we are given the monthly demand and a monthly interest rate. So then you have the same time unit, you don't have to uh, to treat this or, or calculate the annual cost because you have the same time unit here as one month. You have ordering cost of 500 and stock out cost. If a penalty, uh, if a stock out occurred, you will have a penalty of 600, which is well calculated as loss of goodwill and keep track of order until the next delivery. 
So we are asked about the optimal combination of the order size and the reorder point under these assumptions. And at last, what is the safety stock? And what is the probability of not getting a stock out with the inventory policy found in B? So solve this problem and then answer the question number C here according to the phone solution. So that's problem five. We'll take a break now, continue in 15 minutes, and I will show the solution for also this problem. <laughs>